Okay, I have to choose my starting characters. Let's see, we got Pepe and Lindsay, the the odd couple. Okay, it's uh, Surly Siblings. Okay, Mandy and Chakay. Let's see, an amateur pilot and a, a fleet manager. They sound kind of fun. Old buddies Isaac and Julian. Lost security blanket. Um, who else we got? Brigitte and Anna on a perpetual breakup. Does yoga. Had a chemistry set. That's kind of useful. Um, hmm. Uh, all right, they just seem cool. I'm gonna go with them. I remember playing the original State of Decay. I loved the concept of leading a group of survivors through a zombie apocalypse, building up a base and learning to survive in this hostile new environment. Basically, it was like you were thrown into the walking dead. Go ahead, see if you can do any better than Rick, the game said. But State of Decay had some glaring flaws and frustrations that kept it from greatness. So when State of Decay 2 was announced, I was super excited to see these problems addressed. Well, that didn't happen. Okay, so the best way I can break this down is by taking each problem I had in the original game and compare it to the sequel. Let's start with the save system, or lack thereof. State of Decay takes a similar stance on mortality as Fire Emblem and XCOM. When one of your characters dies, they dead. However, State of Decay took this one step further by also not having a manual save system. There was just a single auto-save, so anything that happens in your game is just permanent. I was hoping the sequel may adjust this frustrating system that can see your main character ripped apart by a juggernaut, oh, by the way, screw juggernauts, while heading to a mission objective. Well, they didn't. Still a single autosave, still very likely you will randomly end up watching several of the characters you've been building up for hours die by happenstance. Alright, let's talk interface. The original State of Decay basically had a spreadsheet you navigated in real time to manage your character's inventory, skills, and base. The Squeakwool? Well, the spreadsheet looks nicer. Yep, pretty much it. Okay, now we get into the big stuff. Literally. Rucksacks. State of Decay just loved its damn rucksacks, but they made no sense. For the uninitiated, when you search a house, you might come across rucksacks that have supplies you could take back to your base to replenish some food, materials, ammo, meds, or fuel. But a rucksack took up one specific slot in your inventory. A character was only ever able to hold one, regardless of carrying capacity. You could place more in your car, but that just meant you had to keep running back to the car to grab all the stupid rucksacks when you got back to your base, even if the rest of your inventory was empty. So I hoped State of Decay 2 would fix this, but it actually makes less sense now. They have these base mods that actually weigh more than rucksacks, but they can fit in a single inventory slot. Sure, why not? A bag of food equates to a giant bag on my back, but a stationary bike just fits in my pocket. Alright, this was a big problem for me in the original State of Decay. Team management. Independent of your active character, your community really wouldn't do anything. You could call in a runner to get supplies from a house if you couldn't carry everything, but that's about it. And you had to spend influence just to have another person join you. Props to SOD2 in dropping the influence spending to have a second in the field, but they also dropped commands for supply running, and the big thing I wanted to see was the ability to send your other survivors on runs all their own. I mean, there's a lot to do, folks. Don't just sit around the base. I have stuff for you to accomplish. Occasionally, you get a notice that someone found some supplies. I mean, kudos on your independence, folks. But maybe we can get a game plan together? Oh, you know how I mentioned Juggernauts earlier? Also, again, screw Juggernauts. Yeah, the balancing on these behemoth zombies seemed off, but the logic did too. Like, special zombies in State of Decay mostly make sense. Screamers? Yeah, I know loud people, that checks out. Armored zombies? Yeah, there were probably people in riot gear when the zombie apocalypse hit. Fine with that. Ferals? Yeah, sure, there could have been an ICP concert going on. Bloaters? I mean, someone eats at Chipotle. 
But what was a juggernaut supposed to be, and why is it so unnaturally large? At least the sequel makes them a bit more reasonably sized and makes it easier to take them down, but still, your car just bumps into them like it's a minor inconvenience to their day. Then again, in the original SOD, your car would usually explode. So, I guess that's an improvement? And finally, the big overarching problem with the first State of Decay was a lack of direction. You head from house to house, grabbing supplies and building up your community. So what was the main objective? The ultimate goal you were trying to reach? Vague at best. And the game insisted on continuously giving you alerts for survivors in trouble, new infestations, supply drops, and more things scattered across the map that all had to be dealt with right this minute. And since the rest of the troops can't be assigned to deal with these things themselves, you ended up running around like a chicken minus one head. It was the thing that ultimately led me to putting down the game, that moment where I had no idea what the point was to playing. When you realize all you do is run around grabbing supplies and putting out zombie fires, you're basically playing Apocalypse Middle Management, and sadly the sequel suffers from the exact same thing. Oh, but now we have even more. Here's a plague heart. Here's a traveling merchant. These people need food. This survivor has a personal mission they want to do right this minute. Yeah, technically now they list a main mission, but it's basically a game progression checklist that can be done at your leisure, pushing everything else into priority. So what did State of Decay 2 add over the original? Well, now you can manually refuel and repair your car. So... That. Also, there are plague zombies, which are like zombies that may actually turn you into a zombie because the regular zombies are not good at that anymore. Mechanically, though, it just forces you to hit up your infirmary and make a plague cure, which is pretty easy. You can also choose your two starting survivors, who have a unique relationship that will probably not be fully explored since one of them will likely get killed off in a failed diplomatic effort. Rest in peace, Mandy. Besides the improvement in graphics and the expanded landscape, this is basically the same game that puts me in an emotional state of decay. I give State of Decay 2 a State of Decay 1. Come on, you knew that was coming, right? What happens when I start a new game? Ryan and Arya, Megan, what's that? Wait a second. Are, are all these names and Characters just... randomized? The pairings are all the same, but... Tay and Micah? No, no, they were Mandy and JK! Now, he's... Wait a second. They don't even have the same traits anymore. I shall never be able to get Mandy and JK back. They are gone to the ether. Tay and Micah are just not the same. Birdwatching is not as cool as being a pilot. I'm sorry.